Okay, uh, today I'm going to cover a short video on street porting for the Saturn 1.9 liter dual overhead cam cylinder head 1991 to 98 model years. All right, if you are looking to run a turbocharger or a supercharger on your engine, you're building it for a full race, whether it's circle track, drag racing, this video is not going to be the video you want to watch. Um, I am not building my car to be a high performance race car. This thing's not going to be turning 400 horsepower on a dynameter. All right, it's, I mean, you can see it. It's a daily driver. All right, but I did go ahead and grab a micrometer and I wanted to cover a couple things that are just basics for the cylinder head port designs and how they affect your engine and what type of porting you're going to be aiming for on an otherwise street friendly engine. So first we're going to start with the intake side. All right, because the intake side is going to be easier to cover. All right, now as you can see, the intake ports are actually rather large. Okay, now there's some spots that if you wanted to maybe polish them out on both sides, you can see it in the castings. All right, this is in all four ports on both sides of the head. Uh, there's very minimal gains on the intake side. In fact, when you put the intake gasket on these cylinder heads, you will notice that these ports are perfectly matched to that gasket. They are perfectly matched to the cylinder head. Um, so for a street engine, you really would rather leave the rough casting surfaces. That way there's atomization and turbulence going into the cylinder. It helps mix the fuel better. It'll give you better low RPM torque and better fuel economy. Now, if you are doing a full racing port, get with a machinist, find out what you want to do, because I'm going to show you guys something else with this, which if you don't know it, it's going to help you, but if you do know it, then okay, more power to you, you're a step ahead of me. All right, you can see where the coolant passages pass through the head. All right, I don't know if I can get an angle on it for the light. But the coolant actually passes over all four of the intake and exhaust ports. Part of this is it helps heat the incoming air charge on the intake side because the coolant's at 195 degrees Fahrenheit. On the exhaust side, it helps cool the exhaust gases and you know prevents you from burning a valve, splitting your cylinder head. That's something to take into consideration when porting because if you take too much metal out of this head, you do run a risk of cracking a port. Okay, now we're going to spin this head around and go to the exhaust side. And that's why I got the micrometer. All right, first I'm going to cover the bolts. All right, and as you can see, I only got three studs back in my head. I do got to go get at least one more. I have one soaking in ATF. You'll notice I have three nuts here and one I could not get without damaging the stud. All right, GM used these nuts and they are a permatorque nut. These were designed to be put on at the factory on the exhaust side. And the way the threads are designed, once it's torqued to its specification, the heat and the cooling of the exhaust system won't cause it to thread loose. Excellent design for durability if you never need to remove your intake or your exhaust manifold. However, if you're looking to modify your engine or you're trying to swap out your stock manifold, for the 421 Y-pipe header assembly off the first two years of the Saturn S series, this is going to be a problem. So when servicing this, when you go to reassemble these heads, I recommend getting the intake manifold nuts. You'll notice there is a sleeve in there for the washer. The washer actually will spin quite freely. All right, now there is a trade-off to that. When you put these on the exhaust side, after you've driven the car a couple times, the heat is gonna cause them to torque themselves loose. So you will have to retorque them after about 50 miles. But just looking at the difference in the size of the heads, you can see where the performance losses are in the design of this head. The intake ports are extremely large. The exhaust ports, however, as you can see, are actually really, really narrow and wide. Uh, the reason for this is this engine was designed to produce high RPM horsepower. Wide, narrow ports like this are excellent for performing high, for creating high RPM flow. 
you sacrifice your low RPM torque and drivability when you design them this way. However, it's a twin cam. They were looking for performance. You'll notice the port design on single cams is different, more for low RPM torque. All right, now the reason I got the micrometer, we're gonna go with the number four cylinder. Okay, the width of the port. Okay, so the width of the port is about two inches at its widest point. And we got 201. Two oh two two oh three. So as you can see, maybe one to three hundredths of an inch difference between the four ports. Now I'm gonna start with the header. Alright. So this would be the number four cylinder. Let's go to the widest point. Alright. Now, as you can see, there's already a perfect port match there for the width of the port size. So, porting-wise, the head really doesn't need a porting to make it wider. Alright, now going to a factory cast manifold that's used on the 93 to 98 heads. Once again, we're going to go to the widest spot here at the start. Okay, it starts out. 2.12 so it's actually a little bit larger but as you get in even it is matched at the factory all right now typically on a street engine you're gonna want to do what's called a port match a port match is where you make the manifold match the cylinder head and it should match the gasket now the reason I'm covering this on the exhaust side in detail is the exhaust manifold gaskets are actually about 40 thousandths of an inch all the way around the exhaust port wider than both the manifold and the cylinder head. It's actually not a correct design for a gasket. A gasket is supposed to be matched to the manifold that's being used on the engine. All right, so in terms of benefits on porting this for street use only, I'm going to go to the height because as you can see at the top center of the casting and the bottom center, it's actually raised up a little bit, which makes it considerably restrictive. All right, so even at the tallest point, all right, you have 0.9 inches, all right, 0.89, but at the most narrow point, 080. So there you see you've already lost considerable top to bottom. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at... The factory header is 0 0.9, 0 0.92. Now we'll come over to the manifold. All right. And here we see the manifold is actually 0 0.98. All right. So the manifold is better suited for low RPM torque than the header is. But when porting, the most you'll need to really port will be maybe just to match out this little notch in the top and the bottom and like I said there's the casting on the inside you would want to polish them down because that'll create hot spots in the port it'll disrupt your exhaust flow all right so porting you're not gonna see a lot of gains on this engine on a street engine a full racing port is different because they will actually go down into the valve seat area and port the entire surface inside there and polish it out for better velocity all right, the reason I don't suggest that on a street engine, simply put, you're gonna put all your top end power with modifications like that. You're gonna actually lose that low RPM speed where the car is consistently being driven at 45, 50 miles per hour. Now, if you decide to go the route of port matching, all right, so you'd be taking the metal out of the cylinder head I am going to recommend that you use the manifold. Port the manifold out to match the gasket, port the cylinder head. The reason being is, all right, when you start taking metal out of a header, 
And as you can see, you've only got a few spot welds that actually hold this thing together. Not saying that it will necessarily cause a crack in the header, but once you start taking metal out and adding heat, and then it cools down, you run the risk of cracks. So the manifold would be better suited if you were doing a very large port on the exhaust side, which can provide a substantial gain over the design of the factory ports. But as you can see, Saturn covered it pretty well and there isn't much needed other than maybe a little bit on the center of each port. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.